we, we had a show that night, and we came up early. It was like 11 o'clock in the morning, and y'all had a cooler of tiny-ass Coors Lights, like really, really, really <laughs> small Coors Lights, like, like comically small Coors Lights. Like I, since then, I've never seen such small Coors Lights. <laughs> Where did these come from? You don't even- Publix? <laughs> it, it was like three ounce Coors Lights or some shit. Like that. <laughs> That's all we could provide? We didn't have anybody? <laughs> we were stoked though. It was like 11 in the morning. Like, yeah, let's play some reggae. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's up, everybody? We're back with another episode of Sugar Shack Podcast, live from Reggae Rise Up 2022 in St. Petersburg, Florida. How's everybody feeling out there right now? Are you sleepy? I see somebody chilling on a chillbo. Got a chillbo or a knockoff chillbo? It's nice. It's like, eh, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, thanks for joining us today. Welcome to day two. I'm sitting down with Brandon from Bumpin' Uglies. Welcome, dude. Thanks for having me, man. How's it going? It's good. It's good. Beautiful day. It is. It is beautiful. Um, so we were just talking before the podcast. You got in on Tuesday earlier this week. Today is what, Saturday? Mm-hmm. Uh, what, what, what have you been up to? You got here early. You're doing some new stuff. So we, we just finished a record last December, and uh, we were filming videos to, uh, to put out with the record. Nice. Yeah, we're awesome. in, that, uh, in that content production form of the album cycle. Cool. Uh, it was fun because we were still setting up and getting things dialed in. We just saw like, I don't know, how many people do you think were over here yesterday? The, uh, I'd say roughly 200 people. Yeah, yeah. it was all the stuff. It was like 200 people out of nowhere and, and there you guys were. and That was cool, man. What, you guys were filming a music video? Yeah, so that was just one shot for um, for this new song and it has this big uh, this big vocal hook of like, oh, it was like, oh, 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 oh. So the, the director thought it would be cool if we just got a gang of people to follow me singing the singing the hook and what better place than at a music festival to find a gang of people to sing something that's awesome yeah oh sick man uh, well thank you for taking some time i know you guys are all over the place but really cool to sit down with you and just share for a few minutes and hear your heart but um i've been personally excited about this conversation i haven't told you this yet but you know my background is i've always grown up as like an emo punk hardcore kid right um and there were only two genres growing up that i just did not like to listen to and that was mainstream country and reggae (laughs) and and i remember meeting some of the uh, sugar shack guys and getting involved and and just like how am i gonna how am i gonna do this you know what i mean and i'll never forget i was working at my old job i was a coffee roaster and i'm in this hot sweaty warehouse and i'm roasting coffee and i'm trying to get into some reggae and a bump and ugly song comes on and it hooks me and i want you to know dude that y'all's music was the gateway for me to get into reggae music. And um, and now I'm actually a legit reggae music fan, and my heart's opened up and warmed up to it. And it all started with a tune from Bumpin' Uglies, dude. I think I think it's because Bumpin' Uglies isn't really reggae. It's like reggae adjacent. We're like a gateway yes. drug to reggae. <laughs> yes, you <And> are. <laughs> I actually come from a big like emo background as well. Right. Like when I was just, like so like when I started playing guitar, I was like learning dashboard confessional songs. Sick. Like that was Some like screaming infidelities dude, and yeah, hands down hands all that down. all that. I was just seventeen and sad, and I had a guitar and, like, <laughs> <laughs> like a song, right? <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, but I mean, in saying that, bro, thank you. You know, thank you for uh, the music that you create, you know, in the niche that you fit into because, um, you know, you did it for me. And I think it was critical for me in, in my role and kind of stepping into my involvement with Sugar Shack, you know, because we're so prominent in the reggae scene. So just the fact that uh, you write music and you created music that hooked somebody like me and was that gateway drug into the genre. Uh, meant a lot to me, and so thanks, bro. I, I appreciate it. Man. I love to hear it, man. Thanks yeah. for sharing that. Um, talk to me about that. I mean, you know, your background in the type of music you create it is this kind of mashup genre mashup. Uh, what's your heart behind that? Well, so for me, like first and foremost, I just I've always been into songwriters, like more than like it. I kind of like really stumbled into the whole reggae thing. Like I I started this band when I was 21, it's my only band I've ever been in, and I was just super, super into Sublime. And I was like, well, we were like a three piece. I was like, That's, <laughs> let's, let's just do that, let's like start there. Yeah. But like, I grew up listening to, like the, the reason I started, I wanted to start writing songs was uh, Ben Folds. I don't know if you're familiar with Ben Folds. Absolutely. But like, I was always very much like, 
I just loved like to me he's like kind of like the triple threat because he's like a he's a clever lyricist he's a yep. shredding pianist yep. and he's a great vocalist but then the way he writes the lyrics um, they're smart but irreverent and they it, he just yeah. he's always poking fun at himself it's not pretentious yeah you know so like that just that just to give you an idea like that's like where my head's at as a songwriter like I want to I want to write clever stuff that that's fun you know yeah and then. And then I just stumbled into this whole reggae thing, you know, and I, I, yeah. it, it, I loved it. Like to, to, so, like to me, like the Sublime thing. I don't even think of Sublime really as a reggae band, more as like a hip hop band and a punk band. Sure, you know, it's like they, like I, I really don't even think you could put a Sublime record on and find a run, a one drop. It's like mostly like boom bat drums mm -hmm. and then like like skate punk, you know, and then they got yeah. the dub elements and stuff. So, for me, it was just yeah, like I. It just drew me in, like as, as being a big fan of hip hop as well, like just kind of doing that whole thing and then writing songs over it and. 15 years later here I am <laughs> that's awesome dude uh, when did when did you guys form like how did Bump and Uglies form and when did it form as a band so initially I was like right out of high school I started I started waiting tables like all my friends went to college and I was like nope and I started working <laughs> at a restaurant and I did that for a few years and you know like like right out of high school I'm like you know you're making like 150 bucks in a night you're like hell yeah I can do this <laughs> right. the rest of my life yeah. you know, it's like the most money you ever had <laughs> Three years of that, you're like, no, right. <laughs> I'm not waiting tables. The it takes rest of my its life. toll on you, bro. It really does. Yeah, so I, I started uh, I started going back to college, but at the same time, I was I had just turned 21 and I started hitting open mics, and the restaurant I worked at had an open mic, and my manager just heard me covering like Wonderwall and Say It Ain't So, and he's like, bro, let's start a band. And we, uh, <laughs> he was a bass player and he had a PA, and we learned three hours of covers and we started playing songs around Annapolis, like the city I'm from, um, and. I just fell in love with it. I was like, this is what I want to do. You yeah. know, like, this is, this is incredible. Uh, and I'm good at it. You know, I was like, at that period of my life, I didn't know what I wanted to do. And it's like, I just started playing music. And it was like, this is, I could do this. And this then, is working. You felt the life out of it. Yeah. So eventually, like, he bailed and I met Wolfie. And that was, that's when we started touring. We bought a van. That was in, like, 2010. And just never looked back after that. You know, I'd been, I'd started writing songs, like, probably a few months after I started doing the cover band thing I started writing songs and it's like you know the first 10 or 15 songs were unlistenable but eventually I kind of <laughs> found a knack at it and um yeah yeah it just it just kind of went from there that's awesome man um let's talk about that you know you guys are a DIY band you're an independent group and I mean you you've worked hard to get where you're at you've had a lot of grit and determination I'd love to hear your heart on what you know, what are some keys? Maybe share two or three if you've got them, like maybe two or three tips and tricks. We've got a lot of people that watch the channel. So right now, if you're listening and you're an up and coming artist, even here at Rise Up, you know, if you're a musician, if you're a songwriter and you're at that critical point where you know it's something that you want to do, you know that it's uh, uh, where, what you want to pursue in life, but you don't know really the steps to take. Or, or how to stay committed through the process. I think a guy like Brandon and your band is, you guys are a great resource. So could you just share a little bit of your heart and, um, you know, what are some of the, the tips to becoming successful the way that, that you have, you know, in an integral way? So, like, for starters, your heart's got to be in the right place. And, if, if like, if you're doing it to make money, like, do something else to make money. Yeah. Because you're not <laughs> going to make money for a long, 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 long time. Like, you have to be resilient and really want to do it. And then if, if it is what you want to do, then you just it, you have to try to outwork everyone else. And mm -hmm. you have to be willing to reinvest pretty much everything you make for a long time just to, to continue doing what, what needs to be done. Um, I'm a huge believer and just touring like like that's kind of how we did it like we, we y you're not gonna if you just sit around your hometown and try and get like like something going for yourself you're gonna have to get very lucky i think mm -hmm. like you're gonna have to just like naturally have something go viral or something like that right other than that like the only way to go out and create a buzz is if you're independently wealthy and you can just yeah. buy marketing just do whatever you want yeah, yeah. <laughs> like if you have money if you have like unlimited money for marketing then whatever you can sit at home and do it otherwise you need to go out and touch the people yeah and tour yeah and it's gonna suck like unless like unless you have a connection and like someone's gonna put you on their tour um which once again you can sit around and wait for that to happen or you can book your own tour and you can just go out and do it and it's like 
I mean, that, the entire punk rock like like industry. That's like the the business model. There's like yeah. a whole the whole entire world of uh, bands that are just touring on a small like basement level shows, like just crazy DIY shit. And it's not glamorous. It's not like like a reggae festival like this. Right. But it's honest. And there's people who are like music enthusiasts that you'll meet there and the, those are the kind of people that are going to come to your sh- like if, if you make connections with those people they're going to come and support you forever mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it, once again like it is not glamorous and it's not like it's not the big production and the big party and stuff but like if you really want it like that's that's how we did it you yeah know? and there's a million different ways to skin a cat but that would that would be my my biggest advice is just so what what is that step like you know you you're at this place you've got music you're local and then how do you how do you make that jump like to getting on the road i mean shit for like <laughs> so when i started doing this i was selling weed and <laughs> i stopped selling weed because i started like freaking out about selling weed yeah. and i was buying a quarter pound at a time right so i had my nine hundred dollars for my re-up, and I took my re-up money. I <laughs> see shaky. I don't know if this is bad to talk about. <laughs> it's great. I love uh, it. <laughs> I took I took my, my I took my re-up money and I bought a PA. I took like that was all the money oh, I yeah. had, and then we started doing bar gigs, and yeah. then we would play bar gigs and make like three hundred to five hundred dollars a night, and I would pay my guys like whatever I could pay them, like fifty bucks a night, and I reinvested all that money, and we would go and record music for that with that money. Yeah. And after a few years, we had enough money to buy a van, and it was a very shitty van. It was the one, our album Free Candy, that was our first tour van, and it was like rusted and very unreliable, but it got us from place to place, and we would break down and shit, but like, it got us around. So we had a van, and then once we had a van, I just started, uh, I mean, this is like 2011, so the the whole climate has changed now, but I would would just Google music venues in towns, and I would cold call them. Like, there's a website called Indie on the Move that'll um, show you places that do small shows and shit. Um, this is back in my space. Still, right now, op- indie on the move is you so don't know. I've had now. a proper booking agent for about five years yeah. now, so thank God <laughs> you don't I know you're out of the seat. But I, like, I want to know. <laughs> I think indie on the move dot com is still a thing. I would okay. check it out. And um, but yeah, I mean, it's just yeah, you you can you can. I, I would look at other bands' tour flyers, like small bands, and see like where they're playing, and they call those places up. Wow. Just, it's like truly, it, it it was just a. It was. It's just all about resilience like yeah. you just have to be willing to like all right that didn't work well i'm gonna try this and then you know just go down the line and eventually after 30 things fail you find a way to book a show what fueled that resilience for you like when it was hard you know and you just you keep going you keep going you know when you don't see results for a long time what is it that fuels it for you to keep going well i, th- I think a lot of it was i was young and i didn't have anything else going on like this is what i was doing you know yeah. so like there's like that survival instinct and I really, really wanted to do this. And, like, a, a lot of it stemmed from self-confidence, too, where I felt like I'm good at this. Like, mm-hmm. this is, like, like what I have is good. Like, I could do this, but I just need to get to a certain point, you know? Yeah. It's, it's, it's really you got to believe in yourself and invest in yourself, you know? I That's think. awesome. Um, along the way, on your journey, uh, at some point, you met up with Sugar Shack. Yes. And I know you go way back. So tell me about your origin story with Sugar Shack as a band, and when what was the first Sugar Shack experience? Or I guess it would be fun to know when was the first time you heard of Sugar Shack? I think the first time I heard of them, Ballyhoo was on them, and then because yeah, Ballyhoo was way back too, right, Eddie? It was like 2013, were, right? Yeah, yeah. And then I saw that, I was like, damn, that production's dope. Like, it looks good. <laughs> yeah. And then I, like, looked at the channel. I was like, You called them up. Some... You hit them up. <laughs> like, it's like, they got some views. No, and I, I don't remember who hit up who, but, like, yeah. we actually then that next summer, we did a tour with Val- Valley Who. It was in 2014, and we were coming through Florida, and somehow I got I, I got hooked up with Sugar Shack. I can't Oh, Spence. Did I hit you up, or did you hit me up? Hell yeah. Well, yeah, either way, it's like we linked up and you're like, we're like, you're coming through. Come th- like, So one come- of Spence's homies ho- connected you guys together. Yeah, dope. I dope. just remember distinctly, like, this is back when I was still drinking and we, we, we had a show that night and we came up early. It was like 11 o'clock in the morning and y'all had a cooler of tiny ass Coors Lights, like really, really, really <laughs> small Coors Lights, like, like comically small Coors Lights. Like I, since then, I've never <laughs> seen such small Coors Lights. <laughs> where, where did these come from? You don't even- Publix? <laughs> it, it was like three ounce Coors Lights or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's all we could provide. We didn't have anybody. 
We were stoked though. It was like 11 in the morning. Like, fuck yeah, let's play some reggae. Yeah, Boom. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. And what was that like? I mean, that's a while ago, but what was your experience like getting to the shack and... I loved it. I mean, at that point, that like still to this day, like some of our most viewed content on YouTube is, is Shaq stuff. But like specifically, then it was like, whoa, this has a reach. Like this yeah. is cool. Like everything about this is cool. Like we were able to use those videos to like pitch to festivals and stuff. Like this is what we sound like. Wow. Um, it you know it's it's a big deal when you're when you're like a. a independent band and you're struggling and stuff like having pro professional production, like professional video, professional audio, like everything like. It's shit's expensive. You all know it's expensive to produce yeah, that. Like it is. Yeah. It's something that I think makes Sugar Shack so special that we provide that to artists. Yes. You know what I mean? And and I think that's what's unique too, that when when these guys see something unique, you know, and, and you guys at the time to say, Let's do it, like let's push them. It's like you've been hustling, you've been working hard, and that's what the team looks for. They want to see that resiliency, that tenacity, that like I'm serious about this and I'm giving my life to this, and I think that's one of the key components for us that say, "All right, let's get him to the shack." You yeah, know? absolutely. And uh, it's a rite of passage in a way. You know, you got to be hustling. You know, so that's awesome, man. Um, you mentioned you mentioned a, a moment ago just that you know you said uh, when I was still drinking. So you're not drinking right now. You, you mentioned off off mic that you're two years. Yeah, sober? it's it's about two two years and, and a few months roughly. What what brought that on for you? So I got a I got a DUI that was it was a bullshit DUI like I ended up I got it because I wouldn't blow right and um, so they they took my blood it ended up coming back with no um, booze in it but it's still at that point it cost me like three grand I was yeah. leaving a gig so it was like I'm leaving work and I thought I was responsible and I'm losing all this money so I was like I'm gonna take a year off because I you know I'd always drank I I enjoyed drinking and it's like with playing music it's everywhere yeah so. I was just like, I'm going to take a year off and see where I land with this. And like, I, I lost like a decent amount of weight. I just like felt better. And then the two key components for me were I'm, I'm better at music, you know, <laughs> our podcast. Does that mean it's over? <laughs> but uh, dialed the sugar shack intro music. <laughs> it's like, and you're done. <laughs> it's like the hook like <laughs> 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 um, but yeah like the, t the two the, the, the two biggest reasons for me like really that I, I kind of stayed off it was like so we record all our sets so I had all these sets from when I was drinking and I was like really prided up pr prided myself on like keeping it together when I would be totally in the bag but like I would listen to recordings from us when I was drinking and when I'm sober and it's like while I got the job done when I was drinking when I'm sober I was like on the whole time like yeah. never never faltered and it's like I got to this once again like I've been doing this for 15 years and I'm at this level now that it's like pretty cool and I it could get cooler so it's like I'm very competitive and I want to I want to get to the best of myself and if I'm not going to get there I don't want to be because I was liquored up you know yeah. so that was a big thing and then another thing is I, got, I became a father and I just you know, like I kind of like the idea of my kids not like seeing me all fucked up, you know. Yeah. Um. So like, I it's it's one of those things. Like, I, I'm not an alcohol. I learned I'm not an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. But at this point, like after that year was up, I was just like, I'm gonna I'm gonna just continue to to go down this road and just see where it takes me. And you know, if I ever feel the need to do it again, I will. But for sure. now, I'm I'm just gonna try to take over the world. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for sharing that, and I know that's a that's a personal question, and it and it takes a lot to talk about it openly. But I think it's an important one, you know. And we were talking off mic beforehand, and I have a similar story where it was getting to the point where alcohol was controlling my life, you know, it, and I was using it as an escape, and mm -hmm. I just found that it was everywhere all the time, and um, and it became a very toxic habit for me. And, and so as I have distanced myself from it, and I'll, I'll drink occasionally here, like obviously we're at a big music festival, but man, I've gotten so much more healthy, clarity of mind. I mean, I, I lost weight too. I got started eating better. It just became this push holistically, you yeah. know, of a, of a, of a well-rounded approach to life, you know, and um, not to say that people that consume alcohol can't control it or that it's, that it's bad in moderation, but... I think in our industry, man, it just it can become something that takes over if we're not careful, you know. Well, yeah, and the thing is too with like what I do, and like I have all these songs about drinking and shit, and like I'm in a new city every night, so it was like, pretty when I was drinking, everywhere I would go, people would want to have a drink with me, so it was like it be, it 
became much harder to be like, I'm not drinking this night. Okay, I'll drink this night. It's just yeah. easier to blanket statement. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, on the wagon. Yeah, Sorry, yeah, guys. Yeah. I'll hit that joint, but like I can't. Right. Like, <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, man. Well, back to bumping. I mean, what are you guys up to right now as a band? Well, um, just touring until we go insane. Uh, that's yeah. kinda, it's the, the never-ending <laughs> Still tour. Still on it, yeah, that's but awesome. We just recorded this new record that, I, in my humble opinion, is like the best thing we've ever done. Yeah, it's good. Um, we're uh, producing a whole bunch of like music videos so that we can um, just we're really swing it for the fences with the release of it, and um, just trying to market market the hell out of it and just set ourselves up for success. So, just really working to get all that stuff done. Awesome, man. Uh, before we wrap up, anybody got questions out there for, for Brandon? Any Q&A? Going once? Going twice? Everybody's too tired. All right. Fine. <laughs> Thanks, dude. I really appreciate it um, for taking the time to sit down and, and share what you did. Anything else you'd like to share with, with our fans, with your fans? Um, if you're on Facebook, check out our fan group, Ugly's Nation. Ugly's Nation. It is dope. Hey, I got a question. Where'd the name come from? Bumping Uglies? Yeah. Oh man, uh, it's some, my buddy that like my buddy that I like started when we were in high school together. He was like the fir- like the f- first guy that I, I I kicked out of the band, but he was also like <laughs> the guy that like he played bongos. You know, we'd uh-huh. go down to the to the to the city dock in Annapolis and we'd bust for beer money. And eventually, you know, we were jamming in the basement. And we we're trying to think up a band name um, that like was memorable and funny and whatever. And he came up with Bump and Uglies. We're like, okay. Um, and I wish we would have kept thinking because it was like, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> like no. <laughs> at, at this point, well, no, I mean, at this point, I, I would never change it. I would never change it. And at this point, it's like I'm not dealing with issues. But those first like seven years when no one gave a shit, it was like, you want us to book a band called what? You want a band called what on our tour flyer? Like no, <laughs> like it just created nothing but headaches. Hell yeah! But the 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 tenacity. The underdog well, of, you know, that's awesome. And that's the thing, too, is, like, there was a period where I was, like, heavily thinking about changing the band name where I was still at a point where I could have. And I ultimately, I came back to you. I was like, fuck that. I should not have to. Like, yeah. don't judge a book by its cover. Yeah. And if you're going to, then fuck you. Like, yeah. you, you get to miss out on our dope music. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> awesome, dude. Well, on that note, that's a great way to end the pod, bro. I appreciate you taking the time. Hey, make sure you're following Bump and Uglies on Instagram. Make sure you check out their session um, on the shack. We got to get you all back to the shack soon. Yeah. You got new do. stuff. We need to we need to push it. Um, but be on the lookout for that. We're excited about that. And uh, make sure you're subscribing, sharing on YouTube. Follow us on Instagram. And uh, Reggae Rise Up 2022. We love y'all. See you soon. We got an awesome day planned. So we'll, more on that later. But thanks so much, guys. Thank you, Brandon. Dude, thank you, Appreciate brother. you, man. Yeah. All right. Till next time. Later. Yo, what's the sugar, 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 sugar,